Alright, so today we are going to look at a very important accounting standard, that is International Accounting Standard 2, Inventories. You see, many businesses or produces or retail in different categories of what? Goods. Or sometimes they provide different categories of what? Services. So when an entity engages in maybe manufacturing the inventory before selling them or maybe buy and sell, this, you know, possess or comes with difficulties when it comes to its accounting. So, a standard was devised to make everything easy or to make it easy in accounting for inventories. So, the objective of this particular standard is to account for inventories. Remember, at the end of this particular lesson, you will know what an inventory is or the definition of what an inventory. When we say inventory, what are we talking about? The standard that explains what an inventory is. Then, how do we recognize? When should we recognize the inventory in our books? And then, how do we measure the inventories? How should we de-recognize it? And then, how should we provide disclosure notes at the end of the financial statement? That is going to be what we are going to look at today. So, without wasting much time, let's look at what an inventory is. Inventory is how, what item that the standard would cover. Anytime you are talking about inventories, the standard is talking about three key items. Three key items. So, when we say inventories, the standard gives us three definitions. We are saying that the first one, the, an item that is held in the business for what? Resell purposes. So, we are saying that for resell purposes or resale purposes. Then, if it, to be, or if it is supposed to be a manufacturing company, then we refer to this retail purposes, an item that is held in the business for retail purposes, then we will look at it as what? A finished a finished goods. Okay. The next one is the item that is held in the production process. So we call this particular goods work in progress. So the next category of inventory that we can look out for is what? Work in progress. This one, they are held in the production process. It simply means that at the end of the accounting period, some items, so that means that particular firm produces and sell. So those items are still in what in the production. But we can value them. We can say that oh they are 50% you know complete. So we can place a value on them. Then we are saying what this is a uh, work in progress. Or well, assets. So instead of using items, we can say assets. Assets that are what they are held in the business for what we still purpose. Then we can look at it we can look at it as what a finished goods. And then we can say items that are killed in the business for what they are in the what production process, and we can say they are what the uh, work in progress. Then the last one has to do with the third one has to do with the item that helps us in the production process. So the asset that we bring in for production process. So we are looking at what raw materials. So if it's supposed to be a manufacturing company, then we will say it's what a raw material. So the raw material. So use for production. So the standard IS 12 inventories define inventories to be either finished goods or an asset that is held in a business for resale purposes or an asset that is held in a business in the production process or an asset that is bought for production purposes. So these three items or these three assets come together to form what we call inventories. So remember, when we are talking about inventories, we are not looking at just finished goods. We are not looking at just work in progress. We are not looking at just raw materials, but we are looking at what the three combined they form what inventories. So IS2 covers finished goods, work in progress, and raw materials. And these Inventories are supposed to remain in the asset within one accounting period. So if they cannot remain in the accounting period for more than one, one year, 
they cannot remain in the company for more than one accounting period. If that is the case, then they don't fall under hot this category. Remember, we have some likely items like contraction contracts, and then we have financial instruments. These two items have different accounting standards, so they don't fall under IAS what two. So construction contract, we have IFRS 17, and then we have financial instrument that falls under what IAS 32. So they don't come under what IAS 2 inventories. Now we know what an inventory is or what an inventories are. How do we recognize inventories? So inventories are supposed to be recognized per the condition that have been outlined in what in the framework. When the economic benefits of these particular inventories will be enjoyed by what, the company, and then those economic benefits can be reliably what measured, then we can recognize what an item of what inventory. Then the next question is how do we measure an inventory, an item of inventory? The standard has given us conditions and clues as to how we can what, measure an item of what inventory. So let's look at it. So how do we measure? So we are looking at the measurement of what inventory. So measurement. So they say we should measure inventory at the lower. At the lower of one, cost two, net realizable. Bad. We should measure an item of what? Inventory at the lower of cost and net realizable value. This simply means that anytime you want to measure an item of inventory, you have to get two values. You get a cost of the inventory and then you get the net realizable value of what the inventory. You compare those two figures. Which one will be the lower? That should be how you should value your, what? your inventory. So simply what it means is that if you go in for the cost, let's say an inventory is costing 10,000 and then the net realizable value of that particular same inventory is 16,000. You compare these two figures, how will you value your inventory? Then you are going to value your inventory at what? 10,000. That is what it means. Now, how do you determine the cost? How do you determine the net realizable value of an inventory? So that is going to be our next, you know, subtopic. So, how do you determine the cost and how do you determine the net realizable value? Now, the cost is very simple. If the entity acquires or, you know, deals with acquisition of the inventory, then it's very simple. We are saying that the purchase price and any other cost that is directly related to the purchasing of the inventory will be captured under the cost. So the purchase price, for instance, the purchase price, the tax that are what, irrecoverable, we can also look at what? Carriage inward. They're transferring the asset from where you bought it to the business premises to carry it in wars and any other administrative for overhead costs that are directly or can be apportioned towards the inventory or form part of what the cost. Please don't forget. The cost is very simple. So in a practical examples, in an example, they will give you how the items you have purchase price there, you have some items. Remember discount and others, some of them you have to less it. Without here, some of them we have to what, add it. So if you have like administrative expenses, it cannot be captured there because it's not directly related to what to the inventory. If the business manufactures the inventory and sell it, that one we will look at what the production cost. So we can look at the even depreciation of what plant and machinery. That portion that is being related to what the inventory will be captured as what the cost. So always remember that. All right. But the general depreciation cannot be captured here. Only the portion that is what directly attributable towards the inventory. That's the only thing that can be captured here. Welcome to Ronas Academy, where we comprehend the complications. With Ronas, we are here to provide you with online tutorials on all business-related courses. So subscribe and become part of the learning family where we learn together and we explore. Ronas comprehending the complications.